Thanks for listening to the Rod Zimmerman Podcast. I'm Rod Zimmerman, and this is my podcast. Today, we're talking with REO Speedwagon founding member and keyboardist, Neil Dowdy. So stay tuned for the Rod Zimmerman Podcast. You know, REO Speedwagon's coming uh, our way June 5th at the Eastern Kentucky Expo Center in Pikeville, Kentucky. And I thought, what better way to talk about the show than have original member and keyboardist Neil Dowdy of REO Speedwagon on the show. And he's here. How you doing, Neil? I'm doing just fine. Awesome. For a guy that's been in the band for 50 years, <laughs> I, I've decided my, my actual age is a clerical error. It is. So, it is. Um, We're all 12. I'm just ageless. <laughs> so uh, you and Alan Gratzer, uh, University of Illinois engineering students, you guys meet up. How did you, uh, how did you get the band started? Well, you know, it was completely as a, a little hobby, just right. for fun, something we did on weekends. Right. And we we rehearsed for a long time before we actually even thought about getting a name for the band right. and trying to get a show somewhere. And uh, once we did that, we started to get really popular around campus right. because of our playlist. Pre-internet, sometimes <laughs> it would take songs a month to get to the Midwest. Right. Um, and so we're, we're buying all these underground radio station albums and stuff. And, yeah. you know, uh, playing Light My Fire before it was a single and <laughs> and uh, doing a lot of Beatles and Young Bloods and Birds. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Hendrix, you know. So it was mainly people just hadn't heard most of the songs we were doing. Right. So we became really popular from that. And the next thing you know, a record producer from New York is showing up to check us out. And, uh, and he uh, was impressed. Right. Did you already have the name by then? Yeah, we got that. Um, really, we got it for the f- first show. We'd been rehearsing and uh-huh. we're going, well, let's try to get a, a job and we're going to need a name. <laughs> right. And um, I, was an in- I was an engineering student. Right. And I walked into engineering class one day. And uh, we were studying history of transportation, and REO Speedwagon was just written there all the way across the front wall of the classroom uh, because it was kind of a um, turning point uh, where trucks could actually go fast and carry a heavy load at the same time. So high-speed, heavy-duty, that sounded like rock and roll to us. (laughs) So um, we, we got it. Tell me about your equipment now. You're one of the few uh, keyboardists that still tours with the uh, Hammond B3 and the Leslie cabinets, but you've kind of upgraded the B3, right? Yeah, well, they made, uh, they, uh, you know, the original B3 had these a spinning shaft yeah. and, a, and these fluted uh, wheels, right. and uh, they're picked up by a, by a guitar type of a pickup. And, uh-huh. Um, and they weighed about a thousand pounds and, but, oh, maybe 10, 12 years ago, Hammond came out with one that's, uh, the same in every way that they replaced all those heavy tone wheels with little, um, analog sine wave generators, like 96 of them in there. So, so it works exactly like, um, the the original B3s. Right. It looks like it. It feels like it. It just doesn't uh, break the roadies down quite like it used to. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. After we uh, had about three of them break their back. Yeah. We decided it was time for something a little lighter. And um, yeah, we got a real high powerful Leslie, um, so that um, yeah. all the other sounds on stage don't leak into them too much. So um, yeah, you- it's a modern version. But it it looks and sounds like a, like the original B three. Oh, sounds great. Uh, do you ever bring out the uh, mini Moog? Well, I don't even know where that thing is. I, <laughs> the reason I say this is that uh, well, I knew a keyboardist that had one back in the day, and he did uh, the, the the little uh, pitch wheel, and it sounded just like the beginning of Riding the Storm. I said, "That sounds just like," and he goes, "It is." It's like, oh, okay. Uh huh. Yeah, that's what I used on that. Yeah. And, uh, uh, 
we were, you know, trying to get the sound of a storm coming, right? And wind sort of moaning through the windows yeah. and stuff, and so yeah, that's what happened there. And but you know, they've been they still use them sometimes. A lot of a lot of hip hop groups use them for bass, right? Because they can do some really interesting bass lines, and you know, they'll only play one note yeah, at a time. It's monophonic, yeah. so with what we're doing. Now, with what we're doing now, we, we need him to be able to play chords gotcha. and everything else. So I've got a newer state-of-the-art stuff now. Oh, yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Neil. Um, when uh, Gary Richrath came back for the, the one show in 2013, that uh, that was was that a very emotional night for everybody? It was actually really good because, um, you know, Gary left the band. It wasn't. It wasn't a terrible right. feeling when he left because he immediately started working on his own album. Right. But as as time went by, you know, it got kind of sad, yeah. you know, that he, we had just gone different directions. Right. And that night um, in, in Bloomington, Indiana, yep. we talked to him in the dressing room and he was happy and that he, he just really seemed like he had settled in. Right. And and it, and his um, you know his little things causing him unhappiness were all getting straightened out. So and, and there was just you know total warm right. feeling between everybody, and that was the last time we ever saw him. Yeah. So that was a good thing that it was such a nice, it was a he- thing, very healing, you know? was yeah, a good way to remember him. Are you still in contact, uh, by the way, with Alan Gratzer at all? Oh yeah, we. Uh, mainly on Facebook and yeah. stuff. I mean, yeah. he lives, he, he still lives in California right. and I've moved a couple of times. I, um, I lived in Minnesota for a while. Mm-hmm. Now I'm living in Arizona and my wife and I are thinking of moving back to <laughs> Minnesota. Yeah. Um, cause even with the cold, it's just a great city, oh, Minneapolis. Yeah. And also she, her daughter just gave us a new grandson. Wow. So, you know, she wants to live close to him. Yeah. Um, and all of her kids live there, which are, I mean, I, they're really close to me because right. uh, they grew up kind of in the same house right. where, I, where I was, uh, where me and her mom were living. Mm-hmm. So, you know, here was this 10 year old girl I met and now she's having a baby. You know. <laughs> Time flies, uh, my friend. Time flies. And everything went well, but I don't know how they do it. I could never do something like that. So my hat is off to every woman who ever Absolutely. ever had a child. Gotcha. I, I, it's I, it's I, not I, easy. I, Apparently, no. it's not. No, easy. no, no. If men had to do it, there would not be any more people on the earth. <laughs> no. Well, no the, I know. I wouldn't do that. No, no, no. Sixteen studio albums. You've been on them all. The only member that's been on them all. That's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, that's my claim to fame. Well, with the with the state of uh, the music business as it is now, and with such a, a wonderful catalog to to play from, it, does it make financial sense to ever put out new REO Speedwagon music? Has that been discussed at all? Well, you know, we would. I think people like building their own playlist right. from from streaming and from buying things like uh, the Apple uh, iTunes, right. Uh, store and and it's really hard to sell like a ten record full length um, ten song yeah. full length CD or something and and you know people like buying songs once one at a time right. now or or listening to streaming radio and and uh, uh, and of course listening to radio itself yeah. you know with uh, and. Um, they, it's like not many people sit down and just sit there for 10 songs, you know, from one band. Yeah. And I miss those days I though. We, I miss I those see, days. Yeah. I can, I can see us releasing one or two songs, um, you know, for the radio and right. streaming with a compilation um, album, maybe. Or and, for, and for sale on iTunes, yeah. you know. Uh, if the right songs come along, we sure. would definitely do it. Sure. But I don't think we would take a year off to make a full length oh, no. album. That's just that's just too yeah. hard, and not enough people right. want it. Want that. 
you got a, a big tour starting up uh, pretty soon. Do you still love the road? Well, I I love the stage. Gotcha. You have to take roads to get from one stage to another. <laughs> the, yeah. so I won't say I love the roads. Yeah, the, the, I mean, it's all night sleeping on buses uh, or, or trying to, you know. Right. And uh, I always say the travel is what we get paid for because cause the time on stage, right. just we can't believe we still get to do it. You I know. know. We're so thankful that we're just one of the bands that will we'll do this until we can't do it, you know, and we're all very healthy. So that could be a while. And you're sounding as good, if not better than ever. My first REO Speedwagon album was You Get What You Play For, and it's still one of my favorite live albums. Love it. Neil, it's been a great pleasure and a great honor getting to talk with you. REO Speedwagon going to be at the Eastern Kentucky Expo Center in Pikeville, Kentucky, June 5th. Be there, and we hope to see you there too, Neil. All righty, I'll be there all right. I hope to see you. (laughs) All right, thank you so much. All righty. You've been listening to the Rod Zimmerman Podcast with special guest Neil Dowdy of REO Speedwagon. The Rod Zimmerman Podcast is a Z-Man production.